Greetings, Daniel Presado for Adobe Photoshop CS6 Extended, and we're looking at materials again today. And I'm going to click on my scene here a second time, and it's going to bring up the 3D material for my sphere here. Sphere, sphere material, you can select in the 3D panel this, and it'll swap to the properties materials, or you can click on your scene, and it'll show up here as well. Materials define the appearance of the object. So the parameters that you include for things like diffuse, specular, that create the highlights or transparency, they create the look of your object. And let's go over these objects or, or these material properties. Diffuse is the color that an object reflects when it's like illuminated in really good lighting or normal lighting, you know, all over the object. Um, specular. It is, works with, in conjunction with shine here, so you can control the specular highlight, which controls the intensity or brightness of the highlights at the size or spread of that highlight. That's your specular shine. And you can even change the color of that if you want. You can even add a map to say, I only want certain areas of it to be specular and other areas not to be. Kind of an alpha mask you guys probably are familiar with in masking in Photoshop. You can create illumination in other words, it's going to emit light, which is a very, very cool effect. We can do a quick render here, and you can kind of see when it gets on the floor. I have a, I have a ground plane object here, so you can actually see it properly. I think with the normal ground plane that we have in Photoshop, the default uh, fake ground plane doesn't quite work as gloriously as this does. And there you go. It, it's illuminating light, kind of like a neon bulb there, but we're going to change it back to black for now. Then we have roughness, and you can kind of think of roughness um, as the shiny Apple aluminum laptops. It has that kind of rough metal look, and so it can create a very rough, noisy kind of look to it. And I skipped reflection, but everybody kind of probably knows what reflection is. It reflects the object or, or the texture, which is would be provided in the environment map here, and I don't have one currently. I could probably load something to show you very quick here. Um, boy, I gotta find a picture. Hey, an Adobe logo. How about this? Ta da! There you go, reflection. And you can control that parameter. Let's click here again. You can say you want really reflective or not very reflective. And it's providing some of the backscatter right now from the IBL. Um, let's yank that off for now because we want to keep showing you the other things. And I know this is kind of going fast, but you can play back the video and, and kind of scope these things out and experiment with each one. The bump is a fun one. Um, the bump map makes an object appear to have bumpier or, or an irregular surface. So it basically works in grayscale, black and white. I mean, you could put a color map in here. Again, we can throw that same thing in here. And there you go. We're going to have this kind of bumpy, fake bumpy texture to it, which is kind of cool. Um, let's move this camera. There we go. Next, we have opacity, which changes the transparency of the object. You, it's pretty easy there. And rendering times will go up if you use any type of transparency. Just be aware that any file, no matter the size, big, small, a transparency will add um, a multiplier effect on your rendering times. But they also give great effects, so they're probably worth it a lot of the times. And refraction. So refraction defines how the light behaves once it enters an object. So in this case, I've actually, let's bring this back down. I have an object inside a, a second sphere here. So I'm going to render it. And it bends the light in in a different way. So, you know, you can define it to be the parameters for like glass or water or, you know, a vacuum if you want. That's That'll be another lesson in itself, but it's really fun to play with. Um, Normal maps. A normal map is a way of adding high resolution detail to like a low polygonal object, so or a mesh or just a 3D object. It's useful usually for game engines and you can add really subtle detail to, to an object. It's very, very fun to play with. Um, but again, that's uh, kind of one of those very specific uses. Um, an environment map behaves much like the IBL and creates a background. and that's pretty much it for now. I will probably try to dive into detail on some of these other ones in another lesson, but that's just a, a quick, <laughs> long-winded overview, and I hope that makes sense. Thanks.